In the end, everything, all the beautiful, elegant things in life, depend ultimately on getting politics right. generosity of spirit has co-authored my life. We're very sweaty, it's very hot, so we go for a swim, we take a few dives, and I hit my head on the bottom of the pool. It just hit at precisely the angle where all the force was transmitted to one spot and that is the uh, cervical vertebra, which severed the spinal cord. I thought, once I'm in Washington, isn't that where they do politics? One thing will lead to another. That lasted six months. And when we got totally crushed in the general election, I got a call from the New Republic and they said, we think you're unemployed now. Would you like to come work for us? I said yes right away and started. On the day Reagan was sworn in, that's the first day I started at the New Republic as a writer. If you can read a column by Charles about something and you can still disagree with him after you're through with it, then you know you must have a pretty good argument. <laughs> I realized that what Reagan had done without a grand master plan was to challenge what at the time was called the Brezhnev Doctrine. And that was whenever we take over a country and become a communist, it's ours. And all of a sudden what Reagan had done is to challenge that and say, no, you don't get to keep what you got. We're going to challenge your possessions wherever they are. And I thought, this is a really good idea. And I'm going to give it a name. People ask me, how do you go from Walter Mondale to Fox News? And the answer, the short answer is, I was young once. Yeah. Now, the longer answer is that it actually wasn't, I didn't have an epiphany. I didn't wake up one morning, the clouds parted, uh, a shaft of light came down, and the Lord spaketh unto me. It wasn't quite how that worked out. It's quite simple. In my 20s, I was a Democrat. Uh, and incidentally, this is a road that's not, this is a road that has been trod by many including, of course, Ronald Reagan, who started out as a New Deal Democrat. And what happened is simple. When I was in my 30s, I began my writing career. The evidence on what the Great Society, the War on Poverty, which I had believed in, in my 20s and my teens, the evidence on what its actual empirical effects were began to come in. And I was a physician. I'm open to empirical evidence. And the evidence was absolutely unmistakable. It not only was money wasted, it not only wasn't helping the people it was meant to help, it actually was undermining the communities and the people it was meant to help. And I began to re-examine the premises of this kind of great society liberalism I believed in. And over time, and with the accumulation of evidence, I thought to achieve the same ends, a humane, a decent society that works well and provides for everyone, uh, a small government conservatism is the far more accurate answer for any society. I think this is the usual 
sort of arrogant liberal uh, argument that we represent the science and therefore you have to knuckle under to whatever regulations we decide. When you're making these kinds of regulations, whether about medicine or ozone or about traffic safety, for example, it's never the science that dictates, it's a balance that you make between the cost and what you're gonna benefit. I think the last six months have shown that nothing that Trump has ever said in the past, even in the present, can ever be used against him because for some reason he is immune to the laws of contradiction. He's weaponized Twitter and he said essentially, you better come aboard. He did it with a smile, he did it with a joke. I think he means it. When I started to do your show every night, you know, it ends at 7, the game starts at 7.10. The garage at Fox is seven minutes if the wind is a fair in the Third Street Tunnel from the garage at Mad Stadium. So I get there in the bottom of the first. I mean, I, how can I resist? Passion, passion, interest in words that are intrinsically funny. funny. You don't have to have them in any context. Well, the principal one is booger. Uh, booger is like the number Bo one. Booger is the number one. But I've discovered the word trousers. Yeah, trousers, because it's so stuck up English twit talk. My next guest, one of the most influential and respected commentators of our time. All right, let's be straight up. Charles Krautheimer is the most influential columnist of our time. Syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. With that, we're back with our panel. <laughs> Charles.